Production. You're watching Rogers TV. Life. I'm your host, Jackie Hermans. Now, before we get into the meat of the show, I want to give myself a little bit of a plug just in case it is something that you are drawn to. So I teach yoga and uh, you know, we got a lot of disruption going on. Life is changing, changing quickly. And at the end of the day, if you want some help in decreasing some stress, or maybe at the beginning of the day, you want to start your day off with uh, some good energy. I teach yoga over Zoom. So uh, you can always check out my website, thejoyfulyogini.ca, and find out more about what I do. You can join the tribe, get your chill on, increase your joy, bring in more abundance, and help us to release stuff that's no longer serving us. Now, talking about this show, it's going to be a great show, and everything to do with volunteering as well. So we're going to be talking to Operation Scugog today. We're going to be talking about um, opportunities to actually volunteer with Rob. Rogers TV, and we're going to be talking about the Honor Our Veterans banner program. Wonderful opportunities there. So make sure you keep on watching. We'll be right back with more on Oxford Scugog Life. program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. As the fighting continues in Ukraine, thousands of people are fleeing for their lives, forced to leave everything behind. You can help them. Your donation to the Humanitarian Coalition will provide food, water, shelter, and medical care to the people of Ukraine who urgently need it. Call 1-855-461-2154 or donate online today at together.ca. That's together.ca. The Humanitarian Coalition. Together, saving more lives. I'm Eric Marchinos of Cinema Scene and Review. Join me for a monthly movie roundup of new releases either in theaters or available to stream. See you next time in review. Welcome back to Oxford Scugog Live. So first off on the show, we're going to be talking about Honor Our Veterans Banner Program. And so with me to talk about the program is Tish McDonald, who made this program happen. And boy, did she ever make it happen. It has been spreading like wildfire, which we'll be talking about that. And I also have Ward 3 counselor on the line, and that's Bruce Garrett. So welcome, both of you, to the show. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Tish, let's, uh, not everyone, I, I'm, I'm sure everyone who lives in Uxbridge, but there's going to be people, people in Scugog, people in North Durham, who um, maybe don't know about this program. Can you give us a quick summary about what this program is all about? Yeah, well, we started this program in Uxbridge eight years ago. We were actually the third program in Canada to initiate it. I actually saw a little newspaper article about this big from a, a community in St. Saint jo George, New Brunswick, and they were the first uh, group that adopted the program, um, and another group in Northern Ontario, and then we were the third. So we've had such an overwhelmingly positive response from our community, um, and we're just delighted, delighted to be able to partner with the Legion, partner with uh, our committee, partner with the township, and partner with our individual sponsors who want to be honoring their family members or friends through this program. So I would love to hear why you think this program is so important. Now, when I see the banners 
all lined down the streets around Remembrance Day. It is, it really fuels my heart. And, and, and to me, it's also a, a beautiful education in that I can look up and see the impact that these different individuals made. And it, it really brings in that sense of community. But can you tell me, why are you so passionate about this program? Why did you feel like this program needs to happen? We have a very longstanding and proud tradition of remembrance in Uxbridge. Our, our legion for years has been advocating for sharing stories and honoring our veterans well. Um, so for us, it's for our committee, our entire committee that works on this project. It's another extension of remembrance and just another way to to show honor to our veterans and, and just recognize them. Beautiful. Um, yeah. Oh, now, Bruce, you are one of the committee members. Why did you get involved with this program? This is probably the easiest question I have ever had. Uh, Tish is a friend of mine from years ago. Our daughters grew up together. And when she initiated this program and, and said, would I help? I'm not sure she finished the question before I said yes. Um, it's, it's an honor to be part of it. I'm so proud of what Tish has done with this to roll it out. I think she'll give you more of the details as we go along here, but to grown from what it was eight years ago to now over 200, going for 250 banners in town, uh, it's it's incredible. And to your point, as you drive through town, as Remembrance Day uh, approaches, they seem to just appear. All of a sudden, the, the uh, banners are up and you you can't help but feel it. It's It's an emotional time. And the fact that it's our opportunity to demonstrate, you know, the commitment that we've all made that we will remember them, having these banners just continues to do that. So it's such an honor to be part of this program. Beautiful. And, and it has been making a really big impact within the school system, right? As an educational mm -hmm. side. Tish, do you want to talk a little bit more about that? And also referencing how it's been educating not only Oxbridge Scugog, but way beyond? Um, all of our schools, both the high school that I was teaching at for a number of years and all of our feeder schools have all reached out over the last number of years to incorporate somehow the banner program into the remembrance services. So, you know, that initially happened right in 2015. I think Joseph Gould was the first school. Carmen Grant reached out. Um, and had me doing presentations in the school to as many students as possible. Um, but now what I love is it's the students initiating some of this stuff. Um, in this past year, we had uh, at Uxbridge Public, they made a video um, about the banner program and they had some of the students in the school speaking on video about their connections to who some of the veterans were on the banners. And that's what brings it to life even more for the students. It makes more and more connections saying, hey, I may not have somebody up there personally, but I know that girl and that girl, that person is their grandfather. And, and it just makes them think about, OK, these were real people. And yeah. what did they do and how did they serve us and why it's important to remember? So I'm absolutely thrilled with all of our fetal, feeder schools who have all um, taken on some hold of the banner program and just and brought it into their schools as well. Beautiful. So I, how do people make submissions if they have a relative and they would like to get uh, their relative's banner up on our streets? What do they need to do to make that happen? Well, we have a banner website and right now we've just opened up our digital application portal. So our, our Honor Our Veterans Banner Program website is, is available to seek. Um, and then right on the front page, there's a, there's a portal for new applications. So you can click on right that. It gives you all the information that you need to be able to submit an application. And some people ask about whether somebody actually has to be from here. We've expanded it to say that there has to be a connection to here. For example, Bruce had said about his father living in Peterborough, but Bruce is the connection to Uxbridge, Bruce and his family. Uh, so we're happy to, to honor all those people that have some sort of a connection to Uxbridge. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you both of you for coming on the show. We will be right back with more on Uxbridge Scugog Life.
Saul? Saul? Mm. Toast is burning. Toast is not. Every time she has a seizure, she smells something burning. Now, if we can provoke that smell by probing the surface of the brain, we'll find the source of the seizures. Mrs. Gold, do you feel anything? I can see the most wonderful lights. And now what do you feel? Did you pour cold water on my hand, Dr. Penfield? Now what? Uh, what is it, Mrs. Gold? Burnt toast. Dr. Penfield, I can smell burnt toast. Dr. Wilder Penfield. He cured my seizures and hundreds more. They say he drew the roadmap of the human brain. We just called him the greatest Canadian alive. Welcome back to Expert Skugog Life. I was a little bit tongue-tied there. Uh, my next guest is Karen Teed of Operation Skugog Food Bank. I wanted to make sure I got that right. We, um, uh, Karen, it's really nice to have you on the show, and I understand you are in need for some volunteers. Um, we're we're doing okay for now. We we do have some volunteers on uh, um, backup, so we're just getting a few new ones coming in but um you know the community is always very good to us volunteer wise and donation wise so oh beautiful now what type of volunteer positions do you have available um right now we, we just have a list of volunteers uh that are waiting for a spot to come open a lot of our volunteers have been there a long time and right now since the pandemic we're doing uh, we're only open Wednesdays, but the volunteers do two weeks on and two weeks off. And what right are the duties that they do? Um, so they help um, stock the shelves, uh, fill up the hamper boxes. Um, when clients are, are there that day, they fill up their order with their fresh frozen stuff and their extra items. And then there's always other things to do, like... Um, preparing snack bags and sugar and flour and um, yeah, just really stocking the shelves. And there's always something to do. So every volunteer that's there always keeps busy. Okay, nice. I bet it's also a nice uh, social opportunity as well. Not only doing something wonderful for those in need in the community, but also being able to connect with other people within your community. Yes. Um, you know the volunteers they're, they they get on well and um before the pandemic we were uh always had our clients inside but since the pandemic we've been serving our clients outside and we're doing curbside pickup and and that sort of thing so there's not as much interaction with the volunteers with the clients but still some volunteers are you know speaking with the clients whenever they come in Wonderful. How are how well are those shelves stocked at this time? Um, pretty good. You know, this is the slower time. the The summer is the slowest for donations. Um, Christmas and that, and um, from October to Christmas, we always get tons and tons of donations. So it's a bit slower now, but um, that's okay. We have we have funds. People have donated to us very generously, um, especially during the pandemic. So we can purchase items as well. Now, is your preference to receive uh, funds to be able to purchase whatever is needed or just equally equally as important getting the staples in on yep. it? Um, we're not fussy, so <laughs> either or. Because even with if I order sometimes with the way things are now in the grocery stores and shortages that even if I put in an order, sometimes I'm not getting, getting everything I order anyways, just because of the way things are at the stores these days. And now uh, thinking about those those staple items, what are the common items that you can run out of pretty quickly because they're very much needed and that it would really uh, assist? for people to make the donations of those items? Yeah, I just try to tell people everything that you use at home. Um, toiletries are a big item, toilet paper, laundry soap, because laundry soap can be pricey. Um, 
but things like um, kids' snacks, juice. Juice is something I constantly buy all year long because we, we don't get enough of donations. And it, if every client that comes in gets, you know, a big, big bottle of juice, um, we can go through a lot very quickly. I bet the typical items are canned foods that you would normally receive. Can, yes, yes, a lot, and dry pasta, and, and most food banks have oodles and oodles of dry pasta, so, but cans like soups, stews, they're always good, you know, even things like peanut butter and jam, and your condiments, that, that sometimes people don't think of those items, but um, certainly kids' snacks and cereal, cereal is a real biggie now because of the, the shortages from some of the distributors. Right. I understand it's challenging to find Rice Krispies right now. Is that still a, a factor? Yes, very much so. Yeah. Okay. I, I still been getting the Rice Krispie squares, but, okay. <laughs> but the Rice Krispie cereal, it's, uh, it's hard to find that on the shelf these days. Yes. Um, in the immediate right now, do you have uh, any events coming up, any fundraisers? Um yeah, anything that uh, the community can participate in? Um, not fundraisers, because to be honest, the community has always been very, very generous to us. So we actually don't fundraise people. Some of the stores do, um, you know, the the purchase the bag of food items that are prepacked, or they do um, donate at the till and that. So so we're we're very fortunate that way. All right. So if anyone is interested in looking into the volunteer opportunities with your organization or maybe making a donation, what's the best way for them to do that? Um, they can call or email. Our email is operationscoogog at gmail.com. It's all lowercase. And or our phone number is 905-985-3087. And we can, you know, figure figure out what the person would like to do okay well that is beautiful thank you so much wonderful to have you on the show we will be right back with more on oxford scugog life Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m., it's the RTV Quiz. Giovanni Petiti hosts a weekly trivia competition that lets you play from the comfort of your couch. Play along at home and challenge your friends. And don't forget to follow along on social media. Let us know who's top of trivia and you can find yourself featured on a future episode. Are you kidding me, folks? It's the RTV Quiz, Wednesday nights at 7.30 p.m. on Rogers TV or at rogerstv.com slash rtvquiz. Welcome back to Oxford Scugog Live. We're talking Rogers volunteering now. And I have Lewin Hodges on, the, I was going to say, on the line, on the phone, over Zoom. Lewin, how over are Zoom. you? I'm good. And how are you doing? Good. So it was great to have you on the show. I, I'm a volunteer with Rogers. And uh, I understand there's lots of volunteer opportunities with Rogers. Tell me, Lewin, what are some different opportunities that people can volunteer for? Well, first of all, thank you for having me on the show. And uh, it's great to be here. Actually, to, to, to see you this way. We don't get to see each other in, in person, but it's nice to actually see someone. Um, but uh, volunteering, is it's a great thing out here at Rogers TV Durham. And we're always looking for people to come out. I mean, people. some people have been volunteering for over 20 years. Some people have been volunteering, you know, unfortunately, not in the last two years too much. But right now, for volunteers moving forward, we're hoping to open up slowly. Um, 
hopefully by June, May or June, we can open up again. And we're looking for everything. We're looking for people who can come in. We have a great personality and they can come in and work on the cameras, work in the studio, work, you know, become editors. And not, I always tell people it's not, just because you're a television person or want to learn about television. The good thing about uh, volunteering is, especially Rogers, when you, when you look at something like what we do, this can teach you a lot in life. It teaches you how to work with people. It teaches you how to problem solve, uh, especially with live television. Anything can happen. So how do you react right there on the spot? So it's one of those like things I always say, it's, it's like a rush, right? You know, it's an adrenaline rush. You come in, you work on a show, and at the end of it, you're like, wow, that was really cool. So we're looking for people for all kinds of positions, but more or less, I, I always tell people, don't be discouraged if you're not a television person. Come in and, and it helps you work with other people. Yeah, the reason why I do it, I know everyone has their own reasoning as to why they might uh, volunteer for Rogers. For me, it's my happy place. You know, being able to do this once a week, it ignites my creativity. It fuels my joy. So social as well. Like I, I know within my positioning, getting to interview different people, I'm learning to, I'm, I'm meeting people throughout my community and even beyond my community. And it's just it, I, I feel like it, it's such a blessing to be able to have this opportunity to make these awesome connections. So, well, Jackie, it's, it's, it's so nice to hear that, you know, you're enjoying it because you, you come in with this great energy and that's what you want you know that's what we love to see and i think the community loves to see that as well they like to see people from the community out there talking about the community and it, it's funny you say they you know being a host and being on camera i think a lot of people forget a lot of the hosts are volunteers as well it's because i think we always look at behind the scenes you know even when you ask me the first question right away i go back to you know camera op operators people working in the studio but you tend to forget the people in front of the cameras as well are volunteers like yourself and even through this whole time through the pandemic through the pandemic and we know people haven't been able to come out we haven't had crews someone like yourself has still been doing the job from home you've been home and and still putting out the show still researching still reaching out to people and we we appreciate everything that you guys do you know, what I love about Rogers is that it is very much grassroots. It's community-based, just like we have a local radio station, you know, 105.5 Hits FM. And it makes me think about even being back in university where there's the, the campus radio or the campus TV and how you have an opportunity in getting involved with that and making an impact, spreading positive vibes and education and and making those connections in your community. I think it's it's a really exciting opportunity. It definitely is. I mean, like I said, people like to see folks from the community on TV and you want to see yourself too. Um, hopefully we can get to that point again where we're out at events, community events. And, you know, it's, for example, you know, in the Christmas time, the holiday times, we would go out, we would we would film parades and things like that. And a, and a lot of people would come up to us and say, oh, you know what? I remember you did the parade a few years ago. And they love that because you're showing folks, especially the kids, right? It's always about, you know, the kids love, grandparents and parents love to see their kids on TV. And when you, you film them and then they get to see themselves on TV, it's it's such a great thing. And we're, you know, Durham's such a close knit community. There's, there's so many different communities and vibes going on that, like I said, I hope we can get back out there and things get back to normal, which it seems it's going to be, that we can get out there and be part of the community a lot more and just really showcase what's going on. Definitely. Okay. So, Lewin, if people want to get involved with Rogers, uh, how do they do it? What's the best? What's the, should they go to a website, email? What do you want them to do? The best thing to do is go to the website, rogerstv.com, and, you know, make sure on the top right hand, it's, it says the Durham region, because there's a few regions. We were all over Ontario and, you know, out east as well. And uh, you want to make sure it goes to me, because sometimes people from New Brunswick send me a, an application form. But uh, go to www. A long commute that, to the volunteer uh, position. That, yeah. You know what? <laughs> you, you know, a side note, quick story. We had a volunteer who lived over by the airport, by Pearson Airport, and he took a bus every day. Like, that's how committed he was, and he took a bus every day for six months. But go to rogerstv.com. Make sure, make sure, <laughs> rogerstv.com. Make sure you're in the Durham region. Uh, drop us a line. You'll see my name, Lou and Hodges, and my number will be there. Drop us a line and let us know. All right. Well, I would, I hope your volunteer numbers go right up just in time for 
all of these amazing events that are going to start opening up for us, right? Gotta I think hope positive, so. Everything, we're getting back to normal, people. <laughs> Thanks so much, Lou, and great to have you on the show. We'll be right back with more on Oxford Scugog Live. Your mouth can do a lot of amazing things. And your mouth can save a life. Hi, I'm Tom Wong. I'm just one of close to 1,000 Canadians in search of a stem cell match. We need your help. A simple swab is all you need to register on the National Stem Cell Database. You could be the one to save a life. Find the hero in you. Hi, I'm Sean Lackey, and this is Sold with Sean Lackey. You should check us out if you want to find out what's going on in the world of real estate. We'll have all sorts of guests to keep you in the loop on what's going on in this wonderful world. I'm Deborah Hutchison, host of Talk Politics. Each week, we speak one-on-one -on -one with your elected officials at all levels of government about the issues that affect us all. Keep informed. That's Talk Politics each week right here on Rogers TV. Welcome back to Oxford Scugog Live. So that is a wrap. Thank you so much for joining us. And I want to take an opportunity to thank our guests on the show. Now, if you are wanting to look into volunteer opportunities, such as with Rogers TV, make sure you check out the Rogers TV website. And remember, it's Durham. You're looking for volunteer opportunities in Durham. Um, Operation Scugog, they're also going to be looking for volunteers and food donations uh, throughout the years so you can if you're interested in assisting with that they would love your support and if you want to get involved with the banner program or maybe complete an application to submit one of your uh, family members one of your relatives in the honor our veterans banner program you can also visit their website if you want to be on the show you can send us an email life at rci.rogers.com so send us that email let us know what you want to talk about on the show and be wonderful to have you on and to share your knowledge or whatever you have going on so i'm so glad you're watching we'll be right back we'll be back next week with a, a whole lot more so we'll see you then bye Call the Rogers TV viewer response line, email us, or connect with us on social media. Monsieur de Champlain, when I finish paddling through this wilderness and reach China, I shall greet them wearing this. Monsieur Nicolet, your mission shall be for the honor of the king and the holy faith. In the summer of 1634, Jean Nicolet set off from Quebec to find a trade route that would link Europe and North America with China. But where is it? Further, I know the place you are seeking. For months, Nicolet pushed through the wilderness, searching for the Western Sea. Goja, Mississippi! What did he say? He said, Mississippi, great water. Mississippi, the sea, China. Jean Nicolet was wrong. It was Lake Michigan, not the Pacific. 
But others would follow his dream, Joliet, La Salle, the Laverandres, and they would map most of North America from the Rockies to the Gulf of Mexico.